everybody. This is Robert. And this is Joseph. And we welcome you to New York Mets Baseball on Action PC Sports. We welcome you to back to Shea Stadium for tonight's game between the Houston Astros and the New York Mets. Bob Nepper will take the mound for Houston. He's made six starts on the year and is 4-0 with an ERA of 3.72. This is his first start against the Mets. Dwight Gooden will oppose him. He's made five starts in the year and is 3-1 with an ERA of 1.69. This is first start against Houston. It's a beautiful night for baseball. A little breezy though, wind speed 18 miles an hour, but 75 degrees, and it has a little bit of light rain in the in the forecast. So we'll see what happens today. We'll see what happens today in a big game here. Let's take a look here at the starting lineup for the Houston Astros. Bill Doran will bat first. We got Craig Reynolds batting second, Jose Cruz batting third, Glenn Davis batting fourth, Denny Walling fifth. Ashby will bat 6th, Kevin Bass batting 7th, you got Terry Poole batting 8th, and Bob Nepper will be batting ninth. What do we got for the What do we got for the Mets today there, Joseph? Well, we got Keith Hernandez at 1st base, Tim Tuffle at 2nd base, Rafael Santana gets the call at short, we got Ray Knight at 3rd, George Foster gets the call in left, Kevin Mitchell's in center, Daryl Strawberry in right field, behind the plate of course is the kid, Gary Carter, and on the mound for the Mets tonight is Dwight Gooden. For the replay, three wins, one loss, a 1.69 ERA. And he's off to a pretty good start. The Mets coming off a terrible road trip. Lost series to the Cardinals, won a series against one, uh, a terrible road trip against, against the Cardinals, the Braves, and the Reds. It's good to be back home here. But now the Mets are playing a good Astros team. They're at 14-9, the Mets are 11-9. So let's hope we have a good homestand against Shea. Uh, leading off for the Astros will be Bill Doran. In 1986, a 276 average, he had six home runs and 37 RBIs. Dwight Gooden gets the call, and here's the pitch to start the game. And Doran swings a shallow fly to right. Strawberry catches it, and Doran's retired one out. One man down, and that will bring up Craig Reynolds. Reynolds batted 249 in 86, six homers, 41 RBIs, but he's off to a weak start this year, only batting 100, and has nothing much to show for it this time, so he's having an, a, a slumping start for the Astros this year. Here's the pitch from Gooden, and he lines a single to center, so as soon as I say that, he gets a base hit. Mitchell tosses it back to the infield, and the Astros get a man on first. I think maybe he. I think maybe Reynolds heard you on that because I, did, I guess I guess he didn't like it, so he goes ahead and sends one right up the middle, and the Astros get a man on. Here's Jose Cruz. Cruz right now, he's the batter. He batted 278, 10 homers, 72 RBIs in '86, but he's off to a 434 start. He already has three home runs and 15 RBIs. So Cruz right now, and Cruz was one of the one, one of the Astros' better uh, better players always felt at that time. The date is May 6, 1986. And it's a matchup here between two teams that met in the NLCS, and we all know how epic that series was. Here's the pitch to Cruz. Just below the belt, struck him out. Nice, nice pitch by Gooden. Gets him out, and that will bring up Glenn Davis. In 86, 265 average, 31 home runs, 101 RBIs. Glenn Davis was one of their power hitters that year. And he's batting 330 for the replay, four homers and 17 RBIs. He's also running a nine-game hitting streak. So right now, he's off to a good start for the Astros. Reynolds still on at first. Here's the pitch from Gooden. And it's a high fly ball. Mitchell going back, but he has room to, to make the grab to retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors. Bottom of the first. Starting lineup for the Mets will have Kevin Mitchell batting first. Tuffle will bat second. Hernandez bats third. Carter will be fourth. Strawberry will bat fifth. Foster will bat sixth. Ray Knight will bat seventh. Rafael Santana batting eighth. And on batting ninth will be Dwight Gooden. Who do we got for the Astros in the, out, in the field? We got Glenn Davis at first base. Bill Dorn is at second base. Craig Reynolds at shortstop, Denny Walling at third, Jose Cruz is in left, the powerful Kevin Bass in center, Terry Poole is in right, 
Alan Ashby behind the plate. And on the mound for the Astros will be Bob Nepper. Bob Nepper, three, 17 wins, 12 losses, a 3.14 ERA in 1986. Pretty darn good, and this year he's off to a good start. Four wins, no losses, a 3.72 ERA for the replay. We'll see if the Mets can get to him early. Kevin Mitchell leads off for the Mets. He's batting 313, three homers, and seven RBIs. Here's the pitch to Mitchell. There's a fly ball down the left field line. Going, going, but foul territory just several rows back. He just missed it. I thought that was gone, but it just curved a little bit. It just curved, and the wind was blowing out to left center field, so maybe that might have had something to do with it. Three balls, two strikes on Mitchell. Kansas City and Cleveland underway. Here's the pitch to Mitchell. It's a fly ball to right. Poole don't even have to move. One out. Here's Tim Tuffle. Tuffle batting 275. He has a homer and six RBIs. The pitch from Nepper. It's a ground ball between third and short, and that's going to be a base hit. Cruz will fire it back in, and the Mets get a base runner. Nice hit by Tuffle. Pretty much took advantage. Looked like Reynolds and Walling were a little bit too far out from each other. And Tuffle goes in and puts it through. Here's Keith Hernandez. He's batting 373, two homers, 15 RBIs. We'll see what he can do here. Tuffle on at first, not a stealing threat. Here's the pitch to Hernandez. Got a piece of it, fouled away. Two balls and two strikes. Nepper checks again, and here's the pitch. Hernandez swings, he lines a base hit between third and short. Tuffle will hold at second. He had no chance to get to third, and that's the smart thing to do. And now here's Gary Carter. Carter batting 265, five homers, 20 RBIs. Carter running a six-game hitting streak so far. Crowd still filing in here at Shea. Bottom of the first. Runners at first and second for the Mets. And here's the pitch to Carter. Carter drives it deep to right center, but Bash should have it. And he does. He lays out, holds it in. And they will not send Tuffle to third. And that's the right thing to do because you got to let Daryl Strawberry take a shot when runners on base. Yeah, absolutely. If Tuffle gets thrown out at first base, it's the final out of the inning. And you don't give, and you take the batter of Strawberry's hands, let him have a rip. Strawberry does not hit the lefties as well as he did the righties, but maybe he can do something here. Batting 318, two homers, 17 runs batted in. We'll see what Strawberry can do. Here's the pitch from Nepper. Strawberry hits a deep fly ball to right. Poole going back, and he's got it at the track. He makes the catch, and the Mets are gone. No score, top of the second. Denny Walling will bat for the Astros. In 86, batted 312, 13 homers and 58 RBIs. For the replay, batting 311 with three homers and six RBIs. This Astros team is 14-9 for a reason, and they pretty got the hitting to do it so far. The pitch from Gooden hits it on the ground to the mound. Gooden boots it, and he can't make the play. Walling is going to go to first, and Gooden is going to be charged with the error. Oh, boy. Wow. It's tough when someone makes an error in the, in the infield for you, but when you're the pitcher and you're the one that makes the error, that's even worse. First error for the Mets in this game. Walling on at first. The batter now will be Alan Ashby. Ashby. In 86, 257 average, 7 homers, 38 RBIs. For the replay, 245, a homer and 8 RBIs. We'll see what the Astros do here. Here's the pitch to Allen. Ground ball between third and short, and that's going to be a base hit. Walling will go to second and hold. So the error now allows a runner at second and first, and now the batter is a very dangerous Kevin Bass. Yeah, he was a terror. 311 average. In 86, 20 homers, 79 runs batted in. He's batting 368 with six homers already, 18 runs batted in. Kevin Bass is a terror. He was maybe one of the Ast he was the, one of the Astros' better hitters that year. And still, a lot of people wonder how in the world the Astros lost to the Mets in that NLCS. Kevin Bass gets in there, 
And now Gooden with runners at first and second, nobody out. Here's the pitch to Bass. Swing and a miss, Gooden gets a big strikeout. Second strikeout of the game, here's Terry Poole. He batted 244, three homers and 14 RBIs in 86. He's also batting 244 with four RBIs in the replay. Runners still at first and second, but with one out now. Gooden trying to get himself out of a jam. Here's the pitch to Terry Poole. It's a shallow fly ball to Mitchell. Mitchell coming on, and he makes the grab. Walling will hold it second, and now the batter will be Bob Nepper. He batted 099 in 86 as a, ba as a batter, had an RBI, no homers. For the replay, though, he's 2 for 14 as a batter. But Gooden hopefully can get the pitcher out and get out of this jam. Walling at second, Ashby at first, Nepper at plate. Here's the pitch from Gooden. It's Roller to Knight at third. Knight's got it, throws to first, and he is safe. He is safe. Walling gets there. To th Walling goes to third, Ashby to second, and Nepper has himself an infield hit. What is up with the fielding? The Mets are not able to get some, a pit cancel out a pitcher. Now that's that's uh that's a little bit that's not good. Now you got bases loaded with Doran coming up, and he's 0 for 1. Bases loaded now as Nepper gets in there. And now Doran at the plate, and here's the pitch. And he struck him out. So Gooden felt no pressure, strikes him out, and ends the inning. Three men left on base, bottom of the second. Here's George Foster. He's batting 286 with five homers and 13 RBIs. San Francisco and Pittsburgh just getting underway in National League action. Here's the pitch from Nepper. Routine grounder to third. Walling's got it. He'll throw to first and get the out. One down. One man out, and the batter will be Ray Knight. 279, a homer and 11 RBIs. Here's the pitch. It's a grounder to Doran at second. He's got it. He'll throw to first for the out. Two men down. And now Rafael Santana, who's off to a pretty good start, batting 283 with four RBIs. Santana has a good has been hitting very well early in the season. Nepper gets in there, and here's the pitch to Rafael. Swing and a miss. Swung under that one for the strikeout and ends the inning. Nothing across, top of the third. Reynolds will now bat for the Astros. He's one for one. Gooden checks and deals. Fly to center. Mitchell coming on. And he makes the catch for the out. And now here's Cruz, he's 0 for 1. Mets coming off, as I said, a pretty bad road trip. They got to get a good home stand now. Here's the pitch to Cruz. It's a blooper to second. Tuffles got it. He makes the catch. It went right to him. Yeah, he just went and put his hand up up there and just managed to just come away with it. Nice play by Tuffle. Here's Davis, he's 0 for 1. Still running a nine game hitting streak. Gooden sets in, gets the call, here's the pitch. And it's a line drive towards center, and Mitchell is hit right to him. He makes the catch, and then ends the inning. So two screamers, but both caught. Bottom of the third coming up, still no score. Dwight Gooden will lead it off. He's 1 for 14 for the replay. Nepper gets back on the rubber. Still some light rain coming down here at Shea. Wind's blowing out. It's, it, was a, it was a nice night, but it now cooled off. It's now 73 degrees. It's now beginning to a little nasty. Here's the pitch to Gooden. It's a grounder between third and short. Walling's got it. Throws to first to retire him. One down. Here's Mitchell. He's 0 for 1. Nepper sets and deals. It's a ground ball to the left side. Craig Reynolds has got it. He throws to first. And he has plenty of time. And he's out. Two down. 
And now the batter is Tuffle. Tuffle grounded a single between third and short. He's one for one. Here's the windup, the pitch. And a bouncer between third and short. Walling has the time. Throws across the first. And Tuffle's out. Nothing across. We go to the top of the fourth. Still no score between the Astros and the Mets. Denny Walling leads off for Houston. He's 0 for 1. Here's the pitch to Walling. And it's a walk. So Walling takes a walk to first. That's the first walk issued by Dr. K. And now here's Ashby, who's one for one. Walling, really not a stealing threat. The Mets should just be able to concentrate. They'll send, the runner, they'll send him in at third, just in case of a bunt. Here's the pitch from Gooden. It's a rips a deep fly ball to right, but Strawberry makes the catch at the track. Walling will stay at first. There's one out. And now Bass. He's 0 for 1, but very, very dangerous. Here's the pitch to Bass. It's a pop-up in near foul territory, and that's going to be out of play. Three balls and two strikes. They'll do it again. Here's the pitch. Struck him now. Dr. K gets his fourth. And now the batter is Poole, who's 0 for 1. Walling a little bit of a chance to steal, but I don't see it happening. If it does, we'll be hopefully Carter can get him out. Here's the pitch to Poole. There goes Walling. Throws to second. Safe. Denny Walling does get his first steal. And he is safe at second. Poole's at the plate, 0 for 1. Here's the pitch to Poole. Grounder to first. Hernandez will take it himself. Out. And a small little thread goes by the board. Still scoreless, bottom of the fourth. Here's Hernandez. He's one for one. Mets need to get a win here. Tough losing two out of three to the Reds in the last series really, really hurt. Here's the pitch to Hernandez. It's a high pop-up in the backstop. Does Ashby have the room? No, he doesn't. It's out of play. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Hernandez again. Struck him out. Bob Nepper has his second strike out of the game. Here's Carter. He's 0 for 1. Nepper, Nepper gets in there. Carter takes the bat. Here's the pitch. It swing. It's a grounded towards first. Davis has got it. Throws to Nepper covering. And he's out of there. Two outs now for Strawberry, who's 0 for 1. Cleveland leading Kansas City, 1-0 in the fourth in American League action. Here's the pitch to Strawberry. Struck him out. That's a quick inning for the Mets. We go to the fifth, still scoreless. Bob Nepper leads off for the Astros. He's 1-for-1 one one with an infield hit. Here's the pitch from Gooden. Struck him out this time. That's the fifth strikeout for Gooden. And now Doran will bat. Wind blowing out a little bit more now, 18 miles an hour, so it's breezy out there now to center field. So the ball could carry. Here's the pitch to Doran. And it's a fly ball to left center, but Foster's got room. And he makes the catch. Two down. And now here's Reynolds, who's one for two. Reynolds gets there. Sets back in. Here's the pitch from Gooden. It's laced down the right field line. Strawberry will not make the dive. He'll let the ball, he'll make the play and allow Reynolds to get the fur. He'll let it fall. It's a base hit, and that's the right thing to do. Get it, get make the play, keep the runner at first base. If you make the if you make the dive, make the catch, it's fine. Make the catch, it's fine, it's great. But if you don't, if you don't make the catch, it could be a double, and Reynolds could be on second, and you got Cruz coming up to bat. That's the right call. Davey Johnson made the right call. Here's Cruz. He's 0 for 2. Reynolds on it first. Gooden gets in there. Here's the pitch to Cruz. 
Last to line drive to short, but Santana was a leaping catch to end the inning. Just a hit, but still scoreless. Bottom of the fifth, here's George Foster leading it off for the Mets. He's 0 for 1. Baltimore, Minnesota underway in American League action. Here's the pitch to Foster. High and inside, it's a walk, and the Mets get a base runner. He'll go to first, and batter, batter will be Knight. Foster being held, 56% chance to steal. I think I'll let Knight take the hit. A bunt might not be a bad idea. A hit and run may be better, but with Foster on, I don't think you try. I think you just go ahead and hit away. Never with the pitch. It's drilled to right field. That's going to be a base hit. Foster moves to third. Poole tosses it back in, and the Mets are in business. Big play, big hit by Knight. You got to try to take these advantages. The Mets, the, the Astros have left six men on base so far. The Mets only two. You got with runners at first and third, you got to get something in here. Here's Santana. He's 0 for 1. Runners at first and third. Now Nepper with a little, in a little bit of a jam. Here's the pitch to Santana. Slow ground ball to Walling. They will send Foster home. They throw to second for one. There will be no throw to first. Foster does score, and the Mets get a 1-0 lead on the RBI. And the batter now is Dwight Gooden. And if you're Gooden, you're bunting here. Yeah, you just move over, set down over second, and see if Kevin Mitchell can make a hit. Here's the sacrifice. It's butted on the ground. The throw to first is in time. Santana will move to second. So the Mets now have a man on second, but with two outs. And now you've got Kevin Mitchell, who's a better threat to get a hit than Gooden would be with a runner on first. Yeah, has a nice bunt by Gooden. Gooden definitely knows how to bunt the ball. Mitchell is 0 for 2. Santana on its second. Can he come through with a big hit? Here's the pitch to Mitchell. Hits a deep fly ball towards left center. But Bass has got it and makes a great catch. He lays out for it and puts it away. A one run, one hit, no errors. Mets one, Houston nothing. We go to the top of the sixth. Glenn Davis leads it off. He's 0 for 2 for the Astros. And still running a nine-game hitting streak. Here's the pitch to Davis. Swinging bunt down the third base line, but it will be foul. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch to Davis. And it's a well hit fly ball down the left field line. And Foster racing back, it bounces off the wall. Davis is gonna have a stand up double. And that's, he said safely in 10 straight games and the Astros have the time run aboard. Glenn Davis is definitely one of those hitters who knows when he needs to get it, and he got that one almost went out of here. Here's Walling. He's 0 for 1. Davis on at second. Nobody out here. You're the Mets. You don't want the Astros to get the run back in the inning. You just got to run before. Here's the pitch to Walling. Hits a rope to short. Santana pulls it in. Dives to second, and to double up Davis, what a play by Santana, wow, 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 wow. I don't know what in the world Davis was thinking. I think maybe he thought that was gonna be a base hit, and Santana just pulls it right in, and he immediately doubles up Davis. What a play by Santana to get two outs and clear the bases for Gooden. Here's Ashby, one for two on a huge base running mistake by Glenn Davis. One for two is Ashby. Here's the pitch. Towering fly down the right field line. But Strawberry makes the catch for out number three. One hit. We go to the bottom of the six. Still one nothing Mets. Tim Tuffle leads off for New York. Yankees leading the White Sox one nothing. In the third. Tuffle one for two. Here's the pitch from Nepper. Hits it on the ground between first and second. Doran should make the play. He has lots of time and tuffles out. And now Hernandez, he's one for two. 
Let's settle in there. And here's the pitch to Keith. Hernandez swings a deep fly ball to center, but Bass has got the run, plenty of room, and makes the catch, and Hernandez is out. A lot of a lot of hits that looked like they could have been home runs, but just a little bit out of just a little bit under the ball. I think the the the, the rain is definitely. I mean, you got a 23 mile an hour breeze now out to center field, but the rain because it got light rain, it's still it's keeping the ball in the park. There's a lot of humidity here. Here's Carter. He's 0 for 2. Here's the pitch to Carter. Boops it towards short, but Reynolds has got it to make the catch. Six from the books. Still 1-0. We go to the top of the seventh. Here's Kevin Bass. He's 0 for 2 for the Astros. Always dangerous when he gets up. Gooden still looks like he's got plenty of gas. We'll see how long he can go. Here's the pitch to Bass. A blooper up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. Mitchell retrieves it and puts it back into the infield. And the time one is aboard. And now we'll see Terry Poole. He's 0 for 2. Bass not much of a stealing threat. You could see a bunt here. They'll bring the infield in at third. Here's the pitch to Poole. And now Carter's going to go talk to Gooden. Here we go. And he walks him. A base on balls. And now runners at first and second and nobody out. And now the batter is Nepper. Will the Astros bat with him? Well, they're going to bring in the corners, which is the right thing to do to prepare for the bunt. And here's the pitch to Nepper. And he bunts on the ground towards the mound. Gooden only plays the first. And there's one out. And runners now at second and third with only one out. The batter now is Bill Doran. Gooden knows he's going to have to do something here. He sets up. Gooden gets the sign. Do you put Doran on and pitch to Reynolds? And I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to put Doran on, and now the play will be at any base. So they'll pitch to Craig Reynolds. He's two for three, though, today. But I think they're going to try for the double play. Gooden with the sign. Here's the pitch. It's a drive, a deep fly ball to right center. Mitchell makes the catch. Bass will score, and we're, got, and we're tied at one. A well-hit ball by Reynolds, but luckily Mitchell was playing it right, and runners at first and second now, but with two outs. And now here's Cruz, he's 0 for three. Gooden sets and deals. Pops it up to second. Tuffle should have it. Inning over. One run, one hit, no errors. Houston one, Mets one. Seventh inning scoreboard stretch. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. Oakland beat Toronto 8-2 today. It was Boston over California 7-6. Milwaukee 5, Seattle 3. Jim Gantner hit his first run of the year. Chicago Cubs over the Dodgers 7-2. Pittsburgh beat San, leads San Francisco 2-0 in the fifth. It's Montreal over Philly 9-4. Alex Andres Galarraga hit his second home run. Cleveland 2, Kansas City nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning. We have Atlanta leading Cincinnati 2-1 in the fifth. San Diego leads St. Louis 1-0. Top of the fourth, Yankees leading the White Sox 2-0. Detroit and Texas tied at 1 in the third. And Baltimore leads Minnesota 2-0. Looks like Eddie Murray hit his fourth home run of the year. And Pete Incavigli of Texas hits his eighth home run of the year already. I'm looking at the good I'm looking at some pitching matchups right there. And I see a matchup between Mike Kruko and, and uh, Rick Russell between San Francisco and Pittsburgh. That's uh, not too bad. But let's get back to the action here at Shea. Tied at one, bottom of the seventh. Daryl Strawberry leads off for the Mets. He's 0 for 2. Nepper's still on the mound. Here's the pitch of the straw. Strawberry, it's called strike three. Nepper gets his fourth strike out of the game, and now the batter is Foster. Foster is 0 for 1. The pitch. It's a blooper to left, and that's going to be a base hit. Cruz tosses it back in, and Foster gets himself on first, 
And the batter now will be Ray Knight, who's one for two. So maybe we can get Nepper. Nepper's already thrown almost 100 pitches. Ray Knight is up there now to see if he can get a, see if we can move Foster over. Here's the pitch to Knight. Ashby's going to go talk to him. And here's the pitch. And he walks Knight. So the same thing happens in the top of the seventh, down to the bottom of the seventh, as the catcher talks to the pitcher, and then the pitcher walks him. Now the batter is Santana, who's 0 for 2. Santana's grounded into two double plays so far this year. Runners at first and second. Bottom of the seventh, tied at one. Here's the pitch to Santana. And swings and misses, struck him out. And now we have a pitching change for the Astros. It'll be Frank DiPino. Frank DiPino in 86, a three, one win, three losses, three saves, a 3.57 ERA. Dwight Gooden is scheduled to bat. And yeah, I hate to do this, but I'm going to go to the bench. Pino is a left-right. It doesn't really matter, so I got to bring in somebody that can hit the that can hit the lefty, and it looks like it's going to be Dykstra. So coming in to bat the pinch hit for the Mets will be Lenny Dykstra, batting 294 with a home run the odds. That'll be it for good. Runners at first and second. He leaves with a no decision. We'll see if Dykstra can come through. Here's the pitch to Dykstra. He swings a ground ball towards second. Doran's got it. Throws to first. And that should retire the side, and it does. No runs, a hit, no errors. We go to the top of the eight, still tied at one. Checking out the bullpen, we'll see what we got here. It looks like everybody's available, except for Leach. Glenn Davis is the next batter. It looks like it's going to be a right-hander coming up. And that is going to be John Mitchell. Coming into pitch for the Mets, John Mitchell, 3.0 ERA. He's pitched three innings and given up three hits. He'll pitch to Glenn Davis. Top of the eight, still tied at one. Here's the pitch to Davis. Struck him out, one down. Nice job by John Mitchell, and now we'll see Denny Walling, who's 0 for 2. Walling does hit the right-handers pretty well, though. Mitchell looks at the sign. He's going to be aggressive. Here's the pitch to Walling, and it's a shallow fly ball down the right field line, but Strawberry dives and catches it for the out. Great play by Strawberry. Two outs. And now Ashby, who's 1 for 3. Ashby a little better against the lefties. Mitchell trying to get a nice quick inning. Mitchell checks and deals the pitch. It's a frozen rope between third and short, and that's a base hit. Foster picks it up, fires it back in, and the Astros have a man on first. And here's Kevin Bass, who's one for three. Mitchell looks into Carter, see what he wants to do. The infield's gonna be the infield's gonna move into a no doubles range to make sure Ashby doesn't score. But here's the pitch. Gets the bat on it. It's grounded to Hernandez, who will throw to Mitchell covering. And he is out of there. Nice job once again by John Mitchell. And he gets the job done. We go to the bottom of the eighth, one hit only for the Astros. And Kevin Mitchell leads off for the Mets. Frank DePino still on the mound for the Strohs. Mitchell gets up there. And here's the pitch to Kevin. Rip through the middle, that's a base hit. Bass retrieves it and tosses it back in and the Mets have a man on first. Mitchell not a threat to steal. The batter is Tim Tuffle. Mitchell one for three, Tuffle, not a bad bunner. You got Hernandez coming up the bat next. Tuffle's grounded into a double play. I think you let Hernandez take the shot, they're gonna do a bunt. They're gonna guard the lines. Here's the sacrifice, and it's bunt on the ground. The throw to second is in time 
throws the second for one, over the first for two. It's a double play. Tim Tuffle bunts into a into a one four three, and there are two outs. And now Hernandez is one for three. Here's the pitch. A weak fly ball to right. But Poole makes the grab to retire the side. A one big chance goes by the board. No runs, a hit, no errors. Top of the ninth, still tied at one. Here's Poole, he's 0 for two. And John Mitchell still on the mound. But you got two lefties coming up and I think we'll see a pitching change. Although Poole is better, against, uh, worse against the righty. So Poole's gonna stay at bat. Here's the pitch to Poole. High fly ball, Foster going back, and he's got it near the down the left field line, one out. Frank DePino is the next batter, we'll see a pinch hitter, and it will be Jim Pankovitz. In 1986, a 283 average, a homer and seven RBIs. He's batting six for 19 for the replay with two doubles and two RBIs. Pankovitz a little better, than, a little better against the righties. And now we will definitely see the, and we will now see a pitching change now. And the Mets will bring in Orozco. Jesse Orozco, one win, two losses, four saves, 9.95 ERA. Here's the pitch to Pankovic. It's a high fly ball to center. Mitchell's there. One out, uh, two outs. And now Bill Doran. Bill Doran is 0 for 3. Tied at 1 here in a pitcher's matchup between the Astros and the Mets. Kind of like what we expected between these two. Wind blowing very breezy now. 23 miles an hour. Still out to center field and still raining. Here's the pitch from Orozco to Doran. Doran hits on the ground up the middle. Santana's got it. Throws to first and he makes the out to retire the side. No score. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Still tied at one. New pitcher for the Astros is Jeff Calhoun. In 86, a 3.71 ERA, one win and a loss. The record here, no wins, no losses, two saves, a 4.76 ERA. The Mets have lost about, I think, two or three games in the bottom of the ninth to the, to the opposing team. Let's see if the Mets can win one in the bottom of the ninth. Here's Gary Carter. He's 0 for 3. Carter fly to deep right center, grounded to first and lined to short. Here's the pitch to Carter. Just misses outside and the winning runs at first. And the batter now is Strawberry. Carter a threat to steal. Strawberry not a burner and no chance of hit and run. Strawberry's gonna have to hit this one. Yeah, he's, he's definitely gonna have to do so. He's gonna have to do so. Carter could steal, but I don't think he's gonna do it. Let Strawberry put it in there. And Strawberry does not hit the lefties as well as he hits the righties. If you're the Mets, you look at the bench. You got Heap, Backman, and Johnson. I think you let Strawberry bat. Strawberry is 0 for 3. Fly to very deep right, struck out twice. Guarding the lines in the infield and outfield is normal. Here's the pitch to Strawberry. And they throw, Calhoun fires to first, and Carter is safe on a close call. Strawberry has two game winning RBIs on the season. Here's the pitch. Strawberry cuts, hits on the ground between third and short. The only throw is the first base, and Strawberry is out of there. Was he out? It was very close. I'll give it to the umpire in this one, but yeah, I'm gonna say he was, just missed it. Here's Foster, Carter now on its second. One game winning RBI in the season for him. Can the Mets win one here in the bottom of the ninth? One out, tied at one. We'll see if Foster can do it. Foster is one for two, grounded to third, walked and single to left. Foster gets in there. Here's the pitch from Calhoun. Hits a deep fly ball down the left field line. Coon is going back. He makes the catch at the track. Carter is going to go for third, and he's safe. Just safe. Walling put the leather on him, and I'm really surprised Carter went. Yeah, I, I just don't think I was necessary. 
if you get thrown out at third, the inning ends. Let Ray Knight have a chance. I'm not sure about that play. Ray Knight will now bat. He's one for two, winning one at third. Ray Knight grounded to second, lined a single to right, and walked. Big run at, winning run at first base. Knight, not a bunner, so the squeeze probably will not work. So Knight's going to have to hit it. Calhoun on the mound, gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Knight swings, line by Knight. Base hit, base hit, Mets win. Carter scores, Mets win. Ray Knight comes through with a base hit right to right center. And the Mets will take a 2-1 victory into the night. By Knight. Finally, something good happens for the Mets in the bottom of their own ninth inning. Yeah, about time. Boy, they needed that. And you beat a real good Houston team right now. Great win. So let's take a look at the final report. Jesse Orozco will get the win. He goes to 2-2. Two and two. Calhoun will take the loss. He's 0-1. For the Astros, Reynolds and Ashby had two hits each. For the Mets, Ray Knight was two for three. I'm going to give him the Golden Bat Award because he got the game-winning RBI. A great, a great play there by Knight to get the win and give the Mets a big 2-1 win over Houston. And we know we'll be seeing these Astros Mets more times this year. Gooden gets pitches very well, but comes away with a no decision. As Orozco gets the win, goes to 2-0. John Mitchell again pitched a very good 1.1 uh, innings pitch. He did his job. And although it doesn't get a hold, but it was good enough as the Mets win it in the bottom of the ninth inning. So that's it here. Our next telecast will be the Houston Astros again versus the New York Mets. Oh, boy. Nolan Ryan versus Sid Fernandez. Does it get any better than that, people? Until then, this is Robert, and this is Joseph, signing off, everybody. Good night.